So moving on to barcode scanners. Barcode scanners are devices that are used to read the barcode on a particular product. Okay. So what do we mean by barcode? A barcode is a pattern of lines and gaps that can be read by barcode scanners, which detect the width of lines in a barcode. Okay. So I've given you two examples of barcodes. Okay. So those days, this was the barcode that we were using. Okay, and it's still being used in the modern day world they are using a barcode like this okay let's see what they are so uh, there are two types of barcodes one is which we call linear this is an example of a linear barcode and then we also have an example of what we call matrix barcode this is an example of a matrix barcode and it's much better than the linear barcode and it also has a few more features than the linear barcode let me tell you what they have uh, they are also known as qr codes qr code basically means quick response code they are newer than linear barcodes and can hold much more information than linear barcodes okay and can be scanned from any angle so this barcode can be can hold much more information than a linear barcode and scanning this is very much more easier than scanning this now for example when it comes to scanning a linear barcode the barcode has to be correctly in front of the barcode scanner for it to be read but uh, quick response codes or matrix uh, what do you call barcodes at any angle it can be scanned okay uh, so do watch this video this video shows how south korea's virtual supermarket uses these qr codes to sell their products okay so do try and watch this video as well okay uh, then moving on to web cameras please do remember web cameras are input devices okay they are used to capture your video they are used to capture your picture okay so they are what you call the web cameras okay so they are generally lower quality than camcorders and may have built-in microphones to capture sound they can be used as security cameras and can stream images or videos to the internet okay so on your laptop you would have a small kind of a cap here this is your where your webcam is going to be fixed so for video conferencing or for security purposes you can always use your devices web camera okay so once again, two more links are given to you. These are web cameras from around the world, okay, showing various cities and uh, places. Do try and check them out. Uh, next, we have something which we call a microphone. So a microphone is basically an, a device used to record your sound or used to send your sound to the computer, okay. So a microphone is used to capture the sound, okay. This is an explanation of how it works okay and your microphone would be connected to something which we call a sound card okay so a sound card converts analog to digital signals okay so uh, small low quality microphones are often built into computers and are used for voice recognition recording speech or allowing voice over internet protocols such as whatsapp calls skype calls and all that will be using your computer's microphone okay what you need to know over here is that the microphone is an input device okay that's enough uh, on your desktop pc you would have seen a slot like this okay where you have three uh, holes over here so here it tells you the orange port is for your microphone the blue port is for line in line in means that's example if you want to connect uh, guitar for example to your computer you want to connect for example a mic for example you can always use this line in line is to send computer send sound to your computer and if you want a sound to come out from your computer you can use the green port for example a speaker will be connected to the green port okay uh, so it says over here microphones are often used in order to make devices and technology accessible to people with disabilities so for example a person uh, cannot see very well he can use a device's microphone in order to tell the computer what to do okay then moving on to touch screens when it comes to touch screens all of you have used it somewhere or the other in your life just to remember there are two types of touch screens okay one is resistive and one is capacitive before we go further, do remember a touch screen is an input device. Using a touch screen, you actually give instructions to your computer. So when we talk about a resistive touch screen, okay, it has two layers underneath the screen to touch. Okay, so both screens have to touch in order for a connection to be made. Okay, so 
So do you remember resistive touch screens have two layers on them? Okay. So resistive screens are more durable. More durable means more long lasting than capacitive touch screens, but they can only recognize one touch at a time. So they are not suitable for multi-touch applications. Okay. So when it comes to resistive touch screens, they can detect only one touch at a time. So features like zooming in, zooming out. Okay. Zooming in, zooming out. Use multiple touches, not two fingers, isn't it? So when it comes to a resistive touch screen, zooming in, zooming out features will not work because they can only identify one touch at a time. On the, on the other hand, when we have the second one, which is capacitive. So capacitive is having only one layer of capacitive material. When a user touches the screen, a small amount of charge flows from their finger because humans are conductive. Capacitive touch screens are often used in smartphones. So nowadays smartphones and tablets use what we call a capacitive touch screen. They just have one layer. Directly your finger is what you call sending instructions to the device. Okay. So when you touch the device, electrical charge from your finger is flowing into the device. So the device knows where you have touched. Okay. So do remember in touch screens there are two types. One is resistive and the other is capacitive. Okay. Then moving on to biometric scanners okay so biometric scanners work by measuring part of the unique physical characteristics of a human so when you talk about unique physical characteristics you can talk about our fingerprint you can talk about voice you can talk about iris you can talk about the retina because every human is having a unique set of physical characteristics okay my fingerprint and your fingerprint will never ever be the same okay my voice your voice never the same my iris your iris will never be the same okay so as a security feature certain companies will be using biometric scanners okay so one type you can use is fingerprint recognition okay this is in order to detect your finger then another one you can use is facial recognition okay this is used to identify the structure of a human face Another one you can use is voice recognition. Okay, it uses a microphone to capture the voice of the user. Okay, then they can compare the voice print saved against the voice print against a saved original and check to see if the two prints match. Okay, so certain companies will be using either face recognition, voice recognition. Not only companies, even your mobile phone has a security security feature. You can use any one of these biometric features, fingerprint facial voice and then there is something called iris iris is do with your eyes okay uh, in the meantime if you have time do watch this uh, clip it is about it is from the big bang theory once again and also do go through the advantages and disadvantages of using biometric scanners okay uh, do make sure you have one or two by hearted okay in terms of advantages and disadvantages of using uh, biometric scanners okay and then uh, once you're done with that once you have gone through these advantages and disadvantages uh, we will be moving on to card readers we'll be doing this in our next video in the meantime you please do try and answer from question number 28 all the way to question number 32 okay